So looking at number 7 off worksheet 5, I could put each of them over x squared. Some of you could do that kind of in your head and jump straight to the answer. Since it's the first one, uh, I'm going to show the tedious step of putting every single term over x squared. All right? It's all over x squared. That means I can put each of the terms over x squared. Now, I don't really expect you to do this every time. I hope you don't have to do this every time because that's a little bit time consuming and annoying. But if you do it, it's really helpful. It's really easy to get to the answer from there because x to the fifth over x squared would be x cubed. I don't know. I'm going to start writing them out. That's all of them, so let's keep going. x to the fourth over x squared would be x squared minus 9x. Start to run out of colors here. Minus 2. I bet a bunch of them have that. At least two of them have that. And then x over x squared would be 1 over x. And 8 over x squared I can't really do anything with. So that would be D. I guess for A, maybe they did 1 minus 8 and got negative 7. I don't know. Which means that 6 is C. You're right. So that's, that's supposed to be an easier one, but you're also right that there wasn't a video that really looked at that. 7, 8, 14, 15. Number 8. Ugh, number 8's on the other end of difficulty level. x to the 4th plus 6x cubed plus 11x squared plus 6x. I'm going to go ahead and, and fill in plus 0 just to kind of keep everything lined up. Wait, is this the... Like you can do that block? Or that? This is not the synthetic division. Yeah, great question. How do you know synthetic versus long? Synthetic, to do synthetic, actually hold that question and then we'll answer number 10 after this one because that's exactly what number 10 is addressing. Um, number 8, I've got to use long division. If you tried to use synthetic division, you wouldn't know what to, I mean, you, I guess you could just change it to a minus 2, but then that doesn't account for the rest of that. All right, long division. Okay, I think he went over this in one of the videos, but I haven't like long divided with numbers in forever. So I'm going to do 739 divided by 4. So this is how I remind myself of how to do long division. Like, I don't, you know, I only do long division once a year. And so I remember how to do this better than I remember how to do this. So let's see, 4 goes into 7. 1 times, sort of. Multiply it back. 1 times 4 is 4. But then we subtract the 4. 7 minus 4 is 3. Bring down the next term. Oh, this is a long thing. Yeah, but it, the process with numbers is the same as the process with letters. So that's why I take the time to do this. Uh, 8 times 4 gets me close. Subtract it again. 3, so that's 1. Bring down the 9. 4 goes into 19. 4-ish times. 16. 3. And then when you were in grade school or middle school, somewhere in there, there's a couple different things to do here. Okay, so one thing I could do, and I don't remember what order you learn these in. I could put a decimal and put 0 and then start adding zeros and keep going that way. But what else could I do? What What is this 3? R3. And then what else could I do? 3 over 4. The remainder over what you divided by. And that's what we're going to do with the letters. The remainder over what you divided by. All right, so let's take that process and let's do that on number 8. Is it X squared? 
So when I'm doing this, I'm really only looking at those lead terms. So I'm at least mentally ignoring all the rest of that stuff. I'm looking at the lead terms. Well, what times x squared would get me to x to the fourth? x squared. x squared. And it doesn't really matter where you put it, but I'm going to put it over the x squared to keep all of my columns nice and neat and, and lined up. Everything by the x squared. Now, again, it's the same process, but with letters. So I'm going to multiply that x squared to all of this. So x to the fourth plus 3x cubed plus 2x squared. And then I do the minus thing. I subtract all that. Uh, I honestly still remember my Algebra 2 teacher singing, draw that line and change those signs. Mm -hmm. But you got to change all the signs. Draw that line and change that sign. <laughs> you subtract them all. The x to the force goes away. That's good. That should always happen if we did this right. 3x cubed plus 9x squared. Bring down the next one. So now I'm looking at those lead terms again. Cover up everything else, like physically if I need to. So what times x squared would get me to 3x cubed? 3x. Multiply it back. 3x cubed plus 9x squared plus 6x. Draw that line and change those signs. Oh, this is a nice one. It came out easy. came out nice. It came out even. But that doesn't mean you can use that, No, that doesn't mean we could have used synthetic. It does mean that this is a factor of all of that. But it does not mean we could have used synthetic. So that one kind of worked out nice. We didn't have to worry about the remainder or the fraction stuff. As opposed to number 9, which clearly has a remainder left over because of all the, all the answer choices have it. Clearly x squared minus 4. Let's look at number 10. Which of the following requires long division? Um, it's probably D. Why do you say it's D? You're right. Because it's got a squared something and then it's got another number. Okay. It's got a squared something and, and then another number. Happen. That's a fair answer because it is D. Oh. Like C, C is easy. I can just I can just do the, the synthetic. That's not even synthetic. That's just putting them all over that X squared. Because the other one is A would be synthetic because um, try to answer the question from earlier. How do you know when you can do synthetic? You can do synthetic when it's x minus a number or x plus a number. So now, like B, you can kind of trick your way around. You'd have to, you wouldn't want to do this, but you could divide by 2 and then divide, synthetic divide with 3 halves. So B is possible, but not. Yeah, you, you'd probably do long division on on B as well, just to avoid fraction stuff. But D, you would have to do long division. There's no way to synthetic divide with D. So the answer is D, um, but you'd probably long divide on D also. But it wouldn't be a requirement. So D is a little bit confusing because you... So anything with a squared or above, like that, and then... The, you know, with another squared, term. With another term, it would always be synthetic. I mean, long division. Yes. Probably the better way to say that is... If it's just like an x squared or any other type like that, it would have to be the other one. Yeah. So synthetic is if it's just x minus c or x plus c. Long division is when there's uh, a higher power in there. I don't even know what this word, I don't even know what the word for that would be, like just simplifying, I guess. You are dividing, but it's not synthetic and it's not long. But they're sort of the three different types. 
Which one? 13. And we said 14 and 15 as well. Okay, Thir uh, 13 and 14 are about the same, so <coughs> let's do 13. Thirteen is kind of tricky. Let's do let's do fourteen first, but I will do thirteen. Fourteen is a little easier. So it would be the plus two on that, in that box. What does it mean when it has a zero? What does that mean? It's got it has a, a, a root. Okay, it has a root there. What else does that mean? It's an x-intercept. There's a root where x equals negative 2. Um, what's that point? Yeah, careful, negative 2, 0. That means if I plug in negative 2, I should get 0 for an answer. So I'm going to work it that way, and then I'll work it the synthetic division way. So f of negative 2 is supposed to equal 0 if it's a root, a 0, an x-intercept. So let's see, negative 2 to the fourth plus 2 times negative 2 cubed minus 4 times negative 2 squared plus k is supposed to equal 0 because it's a root, because it's a 0. Let's see, 2 to the 4th, 2, 4, 8, 16. Negative 2 cubed would be negative 8, times 2 is negative 16. That was nice of them. 4 times 4, minus 16. So they're all 16. Let's be careful with the pluses and the minuses, though. So negative 16 plus k equals 0, so k equals 16. Now, the other way to work this problem is to synthetic divide with negative 2. Would it, be the positive two? it wouldn't be the positive 2 because the factor, the factor would be x plus 2, which means our synthetic so divide would be negative 2. see if I can do this in the space I've got. So this is a different way to work the same problem. Oh, I have to be careful because there's a missing x term. So I need a 0x in there. And if this is a 0, that means I'm supposed to get 0 for the remainder. So let's synthetic divide and see what happens. It's a different way to work the same problem. Bring down the 1. This is good because this gets a synthetic division problem. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Add them, we get 0. Multiply, we get 0. Add them, we get negative 4. Multiply, we get 8. Add them, we get 8. Multiply, we get negative 16. And how do I add k and negative 16? K minus 16. And k minus 16 is supposed to equal 0 if this thing is a root. So k equals 16. Look at 13. We'll still do 14 or 15 in a minute, but let's look at 13. So if I divide, what does what does this five represent in terms of if we divided? Where did that five come from? That was the remainder. So that's sort of the key to this problem. If I divide, then my remainder should be five. So I think that's the best way to work this problem. So I'm going to synthetic divide. So 
take my my coefficients, not the x's, just the coefficients. So 4, 2, negative 4, and k. Wait, you put 3. Sure did. 4, 2, negative 4, and k. That would have really messed me up later. Thank you for that. What am I going to synthetic divide? What number is going to go here, I guess, is the... 1. I'm still synthetic dividing by x minus 1, but that means there's a positive 1 that goes there. Good morning. Thank you. So copy down the 4, multiply, add, multiply. Did y'all synthetic divide last year? Yeah. Okay, so this is sort of familiar. Add, multiply, add, again, k and 2. Some people are like, oh, how do I add k and 2? Well, you just add k and 2, k plus 2. But what did, what does this last piece of synthetic division tell us? Yeah, that's the remainder, which is supposed to be 5. So if k plus 2 is 5, then k equals 3. So this is kind of a weird one. Yes, like this this didn't really even matter for this problem. But we couldn't we couldn't jump to the remainder without having those coefficients. There is another way to work that one, but I think the synthetic division way is the easier way. So I don't even want to show the other way. Number 15. Yeah, I don't know that he did one like this in the video, so it's a good question to ask. X minus 5 and X plus 4 are factors of that long, ugly thing. You Find all the zeros. Do what twice? Uh, so, you get the five, five, negative 4. So we'll synthetic divide with 5 and negative 4, and they're supposed to work, right? Factors means, means R should be 0. If we don't get R0, then we're doing something wrong. So that's kind of nice that we know these are supposed to work. So we grab our coefficients. Um, I bet there's supposed to be an X on that 58. Oh. Right? I, surely there's... In the key, you just put 58 minus 40. Okay. So that means it's supposed to be 58X. Well, we'll find out because if five, if we get zero at the end, we'll know it's we, we guessed correct on this correction here. And if you did 58 minus 40 input, yeah, it wouldn't work the other way. So copy down the one, multiply, add. This is why we like synthetic because it's so quick and so easy. Multiply, add. Don't you have to put? So like on the top with a 1, 4, and all that would be, don't you put this, the value of the cube or like the 4x squared or x to the 4? I don't. I mean, some people will put it above like square. this to try to like keep up with it, but you don't have to. And then on the bottom would be like x to the third and then whatnot. Or does that not matter? It, it doesn't matter. Uh, all right, we got 0 for the remainder, so that's good. I mean, we, we knew we should. But this gives us a set of um, reduced coefficients, or sometimes they're called depressed coefficients, which is, sounds kind of depressing, I guess. But we found one factor, so this is an easier set of coefficients to deal with. So off of that set, now we'll use negative 4. And we should get 0 again. Bring down the 1. Multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Good work. We got zero for the remainder again. Alright, what did this question want though? List all the zeros. 
Wait, so you wouldn't go back and put like the 1, the negative 4, negative 15 back for the negative 4? Okay, great question. I don't want to go back to the beginning. Once I find a factor that works, I can use the reduced or depressed coefficients. It makes, well, for one, it makes your life easier because it's shorter. But more importantly, we've now gone from an x to the fourth. This was an x cubed. So that means this one's an x squared. And now I know why they gave us two answers. We started with a fourth. We divided twice, so now we're down to an x squared. And we can handle an x squared, especially if it factors. So list all the zeros. Well, it was x to the fourth, so there should be four zeros. They basically gave us two of them by giving us factors, because factors and zeros are not exactly the same thing, but, but pretty close. We divided with those two factors. That got us down to a quadratic. And we can always solve a quadratic. This one was nice enough to factor, but if it didn't, we'd use the quadratic formula. <coughs> Other questions? Because I have one that I want to work. If they teach us to work it, we should definitely look at that one. Number 12. So there's, a, there's two ways to work number 12. The straightforward way is plug in one half. Except that then you got one half to the fifth. One half to the fourth, one half squared. Like you got a fraction nightmare if you do number twelve kind of the straightforward way. I mean you should be able to handle it, but there's a better way. And the better way is if we synthetic divide with one half. Ooh. Here's another reason to do number 12. Oh, I see. Good. Don't, forget three. Don't forget there's an x cubed that's missing, so I need a 0 for its coefficient. You can almost bet that we will put one like that on the test to make sure you're paying attention to those coefficients and to the powers. So you can't just copy down the coefficients. you got to make sure that all the powers are, are represented. And then whatever I get for the remainder, that should be my answer. I forget the fancy name of that. He called it something in the, the con video, the polynomial remainder root theorem or something like that. So copy down the two. This gets us another chance to practice synthetic division. Multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. This is the problem with these, is just don't mess up somewhere because then it messes up the rest of the problem. I do that right, multiply, add. So my remainder is 2. But that means if I had plugged in one half, I would get two. I'm not going to know which method. Well, I guess I'd know by looking at your work. But I don't, I'm not going to care, really, <coughs> which method you use. So if you wanted to do it this way, I mean, knock yourself out, but then you got to You've got to do one half to the fifth and one half to the fourth and then get common denominators. And like I said, you, 
you should be confident enough to do that. It's just, ugh, why would you why would you want to when there's an easier way? So I'm going to say that equals 2, not because I did the math, but because I did the synthetic division and got the remainder of 2. All right, 11 is kind of the same way, but because it's not a fraction, it might be either way. You could plug in 2, or you could do synthetic division. Since there's no fractions involved, I don't know, whichever way is easier for you. Get them back over these. Number nine, is that going to be synthetic or long division? Long. long. It's got to be long. Can you just skip over that? Yeah, we need to go to 5x squared. Number six, is that going to be synthetic, long, or simplify? Simplify. Although, you can always long divide. So you could long divide with that. It's just not recommended, I guess. Not the easiest way to go. Oh, we didn't do anything off the first page. Those were the straightforward ones. Anything off the first page? Then quickly, number one, is that synthetic, long, or simplify? Well, it can always be long. So if you answer long, you you could always be right. But you could synthetic. You can always long. And you would synthetic with negative three. Yep. How about number two, synthetic, long, or simplify? Synthetic. You could long if you wanted to. Not really preferred, but you could if you like. Number three, synthetic, long, or simplify? Synthetic. Number four, synthetic long or simplify? Long. Has to be long. Has to be long. Can't synthetic that. And then number five, synthetic. What's the trick on number five? I don't know if it's a trick, but when you lay out your coefficients for number five, Yeah, you have to put a zero in for the x term. So as many times as we see it on examples and as I say it, there's still going to be somebody on test day that forgets that darn zero there. And then, yeah, what would you synthetic divide with? What number would you put out here? Positive 4, because the root would be 4, and the factor is x minus 4. So again, that connection between factor and root, or 0, or x-intercept. Although I guess it's not a 0, because the remainder is not 0. All right, feel better about this worksheet now? Yes, no? OK. Very much so. Very much so. <laughs> Good. Good. All right, then we are back on track. And there's no new stuff for today. So if you did those with me, you're mostly done. If you did a few on your own, you could be all the way done. And tomorrow we'll jump back in with notes, although it's kind of fill in the blank notes. Miss Murray has a, uh, a handout that we'll do tomorrow that so makes note taking a little easier.